Hello, everybody, and welcome back to You Are Good Enough. This is your host, Kimberly Bell. I love spending time with you guys. This is um, this is some of my favorite time. So I'm just throwing it out there. I love connecting, and I and I I, I feel in my heart that my work is helping. I don't always hear it, and sometimes I hear it a lot. Um, but uh, you know, you guys are on my mind, and I am here to help to help you navigate your life. And this is all about radical self-love. That's what I'm here to help the world um, understand and the world learn. I am here to bring love, authentic love, unconditional love to this world and to help us all learn that we can have that for ourselves. And when we have that for ourselves, we can have that in all our relationships. And this is where we are going. So every podcast, every video, everything that I write, I do Sacred Sundays on Sundays, right? I'm talking about things that lead us back to the most important thing in our lives, and that is us. And today I put out a quote and, uh, I've got a little feedback um, on it, actually. It's, a, it's around stability. And recently, in, in the US here, you know, we, we just had a very big uh, election. And that wasn't where I was going to go with the quote for, um, for stability. It wasn't what I was thinking, but I knew that it would also stir up that within the collective or within whoever is taking a look at it. So I, I wanna talk about stability for ourselves and in our lives today because it's just so important. Um, I do feel as though our creator, the world, our universe, whoever, you want to, you know, to mention for yourself. I feel like we are being encouraged right now to learn how to go within ourselves, how to build that foundation. And if you hear me, you've heard it. If you listen to me, you've heard this over and over again. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take up time talking about how important that is. But just know that when you tap into me and you are hearing me, um, there is a frequency, there is a vibration that is being conveyed. It is helping you, right? If you, if you, it, no matter if you feel good or you don't feel good, I'm helping you. <laughs> if you don't feel good and you're getting triggered by me, take a little break from me and come back when you're feeling like it's a good time for you because that can certainly help as well. But I am here to help us all learn to navigate how to love ourselves deeply and be able to offer that next level of love in all of our relationships. And it's really powerful when you can be in a love, a romantic relationship with someone and you honor each other for the, the amazing person you are. And, um, you know, it, it's different. We're reclaiming, we're having a relationship, yet we are reclaiming our uh, individuality and ourselves and learning that we don't necessarily, you know, we do have practical life things that we rely upon each other for, but we don't rely on each other for stability. And this is where I guess I'm gonna start this. So when I thought about doing this podcast, what I really had in my mind were men. And um, I feel as though, and uh, those of you women hearing this, I'm, I'm not sure who I may trigger. Um, this is a big one, I think, for all of us, right? Stability. But for men, this misunderstanding came in so loudly for me a few days ago. And I just want to, I'm just having this conversation. So here's what happened to me when I was in my meditation. I realized that our society, our world, um, mothers who I've actually heard, uh, there's this idea that men need perhaps, okay, maybe it's not true for you, but there is an idea surrounding the fact that 
men do better when they have a woman to keep them, you know, um, to, to get them in order, <laughs> to help them navigate life, to tell them what to do, right? And I've actually heard mothers say to me, oh my gosh, he just needs to find a girl, right? Then he'll get himself in line. She can keep him in line, like yada, yada, yada. And, and you know, you've heard this, right? And it goes both ways, right? It's not only for men, but we've heard this around women, but I'm, I'm with men right now. So, so guys, <laughs> if I'm talking to you and you are in a romantic relationship or you are in your life and, you know, this is an opportunity for us to really ask ourselves, what, what is stability? So here, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say I'm a man and I grew up and I've got parents that are like, oh, you need to find a woman. You know, you need to get, you need to get going in life. You need to do that, like whatever the, the words are. If you've grown up in that energy, you, you are also a sub subscriber to the fact that before you can be maybe successful in ways, um, stop being excessive with boundaries and things in your life, whatever that is for you. You may have grown up learning that it will only happen if you have a, I don't want to just say a woman, if you have a partner in your life, right? Could, could be anybody you choose. But the fact that we've grown up thinking that we need a person to, you know, end the sentence for you. I need a man. I'm going to switch gears now. I need a man in my life to pay my bills. I need a man in my life. Um, this is on behalf of the females. And remember people, this isn't all, I'm not, when I talk, I know that I sound like this is like maybe the Holy Grail. Okay. And I do believe that inside of myself, but, but with everything, we are here not to run with something that somebody says all the way, right? The information that I share with everyone is for your own personal discernment. Try it on, see how it fits, where do you need to make the adjustments, right? And then you do it. And, and that's my work. You try it on, see if it fits for you, if you're in my energy. And if it doesn't, it's okay. So let's go back though, because I'm the, I'm playing the woman now. So all the things that I heard, I mean, I remember very clearly, I grew up in a family and I remember having a conversation. I still to this day, remember this conversation. I was probably 13, 14 years old. I was in a car with my dad and he was telling me how he thinks my life should go. He was very good at doing that. I will say um, back then. And so he was telling me I need to be X age, right? I need to look for a man who makes this kind of money. And, um, and after that time, when I get myself secure within myself in a business, not internally, of course, but in a business, if I'm making money, let's just put it that way. If I'm, when I'm making certain amount of money, then I, I can look for a mate and then get into a marriage and from that place, then we have our own family, right? Now, I want to tell you, because I am the firstborn and highly overachieving, right, in a lot of areas in my life, or, or used to be, well, I still am, actually, um, I ran with it. And guess what? I did it all exactly the way <laughs> Dad told me to do it, because that was the program right? And we're, we're kids. We want to satisfy what mom and dad deem as cool, as important, as doing it the right way, right? The values, the traditions that are really important to mom and dad. So this is a big one. Now, when it comes to, um, when it comes to men, right? You may, and, and I think what I wrote about, um, this Sunday was, I wrote about the fact that, you know, if you had a divorced parent, right? Maybe they always had a person in their life. They always had to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, a partner, right? To help them feel 
maybe like that with stability. Sometimes we want to show the world, oh, you know what? Nothing's wrong with me. I'm not messed up. I actually have a person who I'm in partnership with. Isn't it great? And, and it looks wonderful on the outside. And yet <laughs> we're quietly miserable, right? So that's stability. So let's talk about this. If I'm in a relationship, because that's my priority, like that's what I've deemed as being um, stable or helping me, you know, be stable. Let's say I'm in a relationship and I did do this, so I'm, I'm using me. I was in a, in a, in a marriage for 21 years. And I, right, remember I crossed everything off the list that dad had said, and I was miserable. And of course, I, I thought it was me for many, many years. And about year, I would say 20, uh, well, 19, 19, whatever, near the end, I realized, ha, huh, you know what? It's both of us. It's not just me. It's both of us. And so from that point in time, then I started kind of readjusting my perspective on things, whatever. But, but here's the scoop. I knew early on I wasn't happy in that marriage. But because of my rules, my rule set, my background, my family, what people are saying, he's a great guy, he's this, he's that, all those things kept me stuck. I was fearful for a lot of reasons, right? I was having children. I had three young children. I mean, ugh, that, that carries a huge burden upon a person who's been a, a housewife, I'll call me, right? I was a housewife. Um you know, then it's like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I had a sick child, right? There were a lot of things that came into play and they do for us, but, but here, and I'm getting off on tangents, sorry, but here's the point I want to make. Because my rules are a certain way, I get into a marriage and I don't allow myself to really take a stand when I'm unhappy because um, the other rule that I had was you don't break a contract. You don't get out of anything that you commit to, right? So I was running on that as well. And many of us listening are probably doing that as well. But what we deem as stability isn't always stability, right? Because the truth is, is that it may have looked like I had stability and I did in ways, right? I had financial stability. I had um, another, um, you know, person to, to at times share um, the things that need to get done. Those things, yes. But was I happy? Was it really fulfilling me? Was it allowing me to be who I, I came here to be? And the truth is, is that no. And so finding, tapping into that place inside of ourselves and reclaiming ourselves right? Which is radical self-love. And it takes bravery to take a stand and say, you know what? This isn't working for me. And I, and I did after a while, but I always thought it was just me, I guess, you know, and that I was being difficult or whatever. And, and I was in ways, but another story, stability. So you can see though, if I've decided that I have to have a boyfriend or I have to have a girlfriend. And, and I, I'll, you know, and, and that was the motivation after the, the divorce too, right? Because it's still stability. I haven't learned yet that stability is built on the inside. Stability isn't built by bringing somebody else into my equation. When I bring another human being into my equation, when I still have healing, that I haven't taken, um, I was going to say taken care of, when I haven't healed, guess what? We're going to redo. We're going to redo a cycle. It's not going to be that match that you thought it was going to be. It may look like that in the beginning, and then you get into it, and then you're like, oh, wow, this is a different rodeo than I thought it was going to be. So, you know, it's, it's, it's paramount at this time. Two, ask ourselves, what is stability for us, right? It's a great question. <laughs> we're going to ask a lot of questions during this time because we're going to have a heck of a lot of changes in our world. Now, for the next few months, moving into the next few years, we are going to be more successful in our lives if we can start asking ourselves the question, what is stability for me? 
and taking a look at, is it really making me feel stable or is it actually taking me away from myself so that I feel less stable? And that's what happens in relationships if we're in a codependent relationship, which is a conditional relationship. If we're in a codependent relationship, which is I need to keep up my end of the bargain, whatever that ends up being, but then we play these roles and somebody's always given a lot more than somebody else. So it seems, feels, and looks. And if that's the case, I can't feel, how do I feel stable? If I'm so busy doing everything for somebody else or being that strong person for somebody else. And so through my life, yeah, I've realized, you know, and now in relationships, oh boy, I'm so clear <laughs> about, um, about what stability is for me, I'll say. Um, but I, I offer you this and I, I threw a lot at you today. <laughs> like I feel like I always do. Um, Feel free to go back and listen to this. You know, this is this is important. And I do, I do know that when you are listening to me, there are things that you're getting, right? And there are things that you're getting subconsciously, consciously. And then there are other things that you haven't, maybe it wasn't, you weren't ready to realize it yet for yourself. So, and as always, we're on this journey right, to uncover who we truly are and to stand in our power and be who it is that we, we came here to be. And this is a journey of radical self-love because we're here to learn what love is. And love is choosing ourselves first and then offering that to everybody else in our life. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. You will just be a lot more um, genuine and authentic in your relationships and you won't feel insecure anymore because you've healed yourself. And this is one way we can start to take a look at what needs to be healed. So if I'm in a relationship right now and I'm not feeling very stable, the questions for you are, why don't I feel stable? You can write them down, right? Why don't I feel stable? What did I believe about stability? How has my view on what makes me feel stable, which often aligns with what makes me feel good, right? How's that changed over time, over the years, okay? Or over the months? And how do you feel now? So I've given you a little bit of, uh, you know, something to contemplate and, um, and I hope that it helps you on our journey to radical self-love for ourselves and everybody else in the world, right? We, we want to offer that to everybody. And I just, on a side note, I wasn't going to talk about politics and I'm not going to, you know, I'm all about unity. So anything that divides people is not where my energy goes. Typically, sometimes, you know, I still get a little pulled in and then I have to realize, oh boy, where's my energy going, right? Unity, so that one day, hopefully, we will all realize how much, how we are truly related to each other and how much we affect each other energetically. We will realize and rise above the chaos of the finger pointing and the blame and we'll actually choose, wow, I don't really like the way that makes me feel, right? And we'll go into a different place, which is unity within ourselves and then unity for the whole. So, um, so keep unity in mind and try to rise above the chaos of what happens and spend more time with yourself and doing things that genuinely make you feel good for yourself. And, uh, and yeah, ask yourself the question, what makes me feel stable? What truly does? Okay. Love to you all. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to talking to you all soon. Thanks so much.